Hello, and welcome to Fluke Fridays, episode number 22. Hope you guys are doing well, and happy Friday. Today what we're gonna go over are two pyrometers, or in general, just how do pyrometers or laser temperature guns work? Um, hopefully it'll be um, entertaining for you guys, both to understand how these things work and informative of how these work, as well as some of the differences between Fluke and other brands that are out in the market. I'll also show you an Ampro one, which I have here. So let's just jump right into it and look at these tools. So when you look at a laser distance, or not a laser distance, a laser temperature gun or a pyrometer, you'll see a few things on any of these. They normally have a trigger. They normally will initiate a laser. So you guys see the laser on this one. This one actually has two, and we'll get to that later. They'll display your temperature readings right there on the surface, and there's gonna be some other things about them. So you'll notice here, this is something called a distance to spot ratio, DS. This is a 20 to one. So what does that mean? That means at 20 inches away, you're gonna be measuring a one inch circle on average, and whereas this one, it's gonna be distance to spot ratio of, let me see if I can get it right, 12 to one. So a distance of 12 inches away, we're gonna be measuring a one inch circle. So a little bit about what that is. I brought a flashlight here so I can uh, talk a little bit about, kind of visualize what that looks like. So if you think about these as a cone, they're shooting out a cone and as they shoot out this cone, the cone gets larger and larger. And so to use it effectively, use it the way you should be using it, you have to make sure that that entire circle that that cone is producing is on whatever object you care about measuring. Because if it's greater than that object, what ends up happening is you're taking the average of that entire circle. So if some of it is hot, but some of it is cold, you're not getting as accurate of a reading. So back to the desk, if we look at this flashlight, you see it creates a circle, right? And as I get closer, the circle gets tighter. And as I get further away, the circle gets bigger. So if we were thinking about the spot radiometers or the temperature, the laser temperature guns, that's exactly what it's doing, right? Further away, the bigger the spot. So when people ask me, well, is this the right tool for that? Well, that's a hard question to answer because what is your application? What is the size of the object you're shooting? All of that makes a big play. And how far away are you going to be? So for instance, if let's say you're gonna to try to measure the temperature of a light bulb. Well, if you stand 30 feet away, right? If we did that um, a 10 to one, let's, let's do a 10 to one ratio. If you did, if you're 30 feet away, 10 to one ratio, that's gonna be what? Uh, one foot for every 10 feet. So one foot, you're gonna be at, uh, or at 10 feet, you're gonna be at one foot diameter, 20 feet, two feet diameter, 30 feet, three foot in diameter. So if you're trying to measure a single light bulb and you're standing on the floor of a factory and you're shooting way up high at a high bay, you're, in, you're measuring that entire ceiling in addition to the light. So you might see the temperature go up, but there's no way it's gonna match what the temperature would be if you were really close to it, say 12 inches, 30 inches away. That is one thing that's gonna drive the price up when you get to these laser temperature guns. The tighter that, or the higher that distance to spot ratio, the more it's gonna cost. So let's say you have like a 50 to one or a 60 to one, that's a really, really high. That means 60 inches away, you're measuring a one inch circle. That's a pretty tight grouping. And you're gonna pay for that with the optics, right? So that is one thing that I think most people don't understand. They think, and I'm gonna show this, the, if we should look at this amper one, they think because I have this little dot here, this laser, that I'm measuring that exact dot, not realizing that it's a cone and we're actually measuring a little circle here, right? And in this one, it's a 20 to one, so being 10 inches away, I'm measuring you know, a half inch circle. So it's pretty tight, but it's not that exact spot. And if I was 30 feet away, that's gonna be a much bigger circle, even though the laser's still a single dot. So one thing Fluke did is when they came out with the uh, 62 Max Plus, um, you'll see this one actually has two lasers and they're a little offset and it's that way for a reason. So you can kind of see if we do it 12 to one and I get about 12 inches away, you'll see that's about one inch apart. 
If I get two feet away or 24 inches away, see it's about two inches apart. So as I move away from it, those lasers get further and further apart. As I come back down and get closer, they get closer together. This is um, Fluke's attempt to help you use the tool correctly so that you're not accidentally looking where that laser is and thinking that that's gonna measure that exact point. Now, if you do want exact points and you wanna stand at a greater distance, you might wanna look at something more like a thermal imager. That would be a better use case for this. But enough about that. Hopefully you guys understand now kind of how these work and when you should use them and how they should be used. Especially if you're looking at breakers, right? You don't wanna stand you know, with a 12 to one, you don't wanna stand five feet away and look at a breaker because you're looking at a five inch circle. You're gonna need to be pretty stinking close to it, six inches, one foot away, and then you could probably see the difference in temperature as you scan up and down the breaker panel, okay? Now, what makes these Fluke uh, 60 series, The there's like um, a 62 Max, a 62 Max Plus, 64, I don't know if there's any other, but there's several 60 series. The great thing about these is they are completely water and dust resistance, IP54. They can literally be dropped in a thing of water. They have a 10 foot drop test, super rugged. They've got this like nice like uh, rubber overlay that makes it tough, which is nice. And what I really like, and this is something a lot of people don't realize, these run on a single AA battery. A lot of the laser distance meters out there on the market run on a nine volt. And if you ever have to replace a nine volt battery, they are a lot more expensive than double A's. Now, obviously you don't have to replace them as often, but you know, I guess it's give and take. But running off a single double A battery is really, I think it's the only one in the market, or this series is the only um, laser distance meter in the market that can do that. So that's pretty cool. Rugged, both of them have, you know, depending on what you get, you're gonna be paying for a backlit screen. Not all laser meters have a backlit screen. Uh, both of these have the ability to turn on the laser, turn off the laser, um, both on the Amprobe and the Fluke. You can go through the menu setting. You can adjust emissivity. Some of them won't let you adjust emissivity. Emissivity is a rating on how shiny a surface is and how efficient that surface throws off radiation so that we can get an accurate temperature reading. So the best example I have for that is if you take one of these and you shine it at a chrome exhaust of like a, um, of a Harley or something, it's gonna not tell you it's very hot. But if you touch it, you'll leave your fingerprints, right? Well, same thing, if you put your hand, you know, close to that uh, exhaust, you probably won't feel much heat coming to it. But if you touched it, you'd know it was really hot. On the inverse of that is, think of a cast iron skillet. You heat a cast iron skillet up, you can hold that thing up across the room almost and feel it against your face or your hand. Well, that has a very high emissivity, meaning we can take this and to get a really good temperature reading of a cast iron skillet, but we can't use this and get a good, accurate temperature reading of chrome tailpipes. So that's a little bit about emissivity. Those That feature or that uh, component can be adjusted but if it gets below, I don't know, 65, 70, or 0 0.65, 0 0.7 emissivity, it really is just so reflective that it doesn't matter how much you adjust it. So, but painted surfaces, plastics, that, that can do well for you. Um, anyways, I hope you guys find this informative. Hopefully you will never use a laser temperature gun the same again. Whether you have a single laser like this one or not, it doesn't really matter. As long as you're using it correctly and you're paying attention to that distance to spot ratio, you guys will get much more accurate readings and be able to diagnose things more quickly. Thanks. I hope you guys had a wonderful day. And if you guys have any comments or questions, leave those below. If you want to subscribe, feel free to do that. Share it with your electrician friends. We're happy to keep them informed on what's going on in the fluke world and uh, how to use their tools more effectively. Thanks and take care.